Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to implement custom hand joint tracking on the HoloLens 2 in Unity. Now the HoloLens tracks about 25 individual joints on each hand, and there are some C-sharp scripts that we can write to attach custom game objects and do a bunch of other cool things in Unity. So that's what I'll show you in this tutorial. And then after we write all the code and all that stuff, I'll run it on the HoloLens 2 so we can see it in action. And just to give you a quick preview, this is going to be the final result of the project that we're going to build in this video. Okay, I'm going to start here in Unity Hub. On the drop down, I'm going to select 2019.4.18 for the version. And then I'm going to make sure 3D is selected. And I'm going to call this HoloLens Hand Tracking. And then click Create. Okay, Unity's open now. I'm gonna set this project up to be a HoloLens project. So I'm gonna go up to File, Build Settings, and select Universal Windows Platform, and then Switch Platform. You'll know it's done because the buttons down at the bottom will say Build and Build and Run. So once it looks like this, uh, we also wanna make sure the target device is any device and the architecture is 64. So if it looks like this, we can X out of that. And now we're gonna import the MRTK packages. So I'll go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then I'm going to locate my MRTK files, which are right there, and I'm going to be using 2.4.0, and I'm going to import the foundation file. Okay, this Import Package window will pop up. We'll just make sure to click All, and then Import. When that's done, this MRTK Project Configurator will pop up. We just want to make sure everything is selected with these checkboxes, and then we'll click Apply. Another one's going to pop up after that, and down at the Audio Spatializer, we're going to select MSHRTF Spatializer. And then we'll click Apply after that. All right, next we're going to add MRTK to our scene, so we'll go up here to Mixed Reality Toolkit, and then click Add to Scene and Configure. And then now you can see it's here in our hierarchy and it's also in the scene right here. To start, I'm gonna clone the default Mixed Reality Toolkit configuration profile. And I'm actually gonna change that to the HoloLens 2 configuration profile first. So from that dropdown, I'll click that. And then I'll click clone here on the right. And that's just gonna clone it so we can change some settings. So I'll click that and then click clone right here. And we're good to go. I just want to check a few things before we start. I want to make sure that Enable Boundary System is unchecked. Enable Spatial Awareness is unchecked. And then for Diagnostics, I'm also going to uncheck that. And that'll just make sure that the frames per second and other uh, processing UI doesn't show up when we're trying to run this. Okay, we're going to save what we have so far. And then I'm going to add a sphere to the scene. And that's gonna be the game object that we're going to attach to each of our fingers that we're gonna be tracking. So I'm gonna right click, go to 3D object, and add a sphere. And then this is gonna be pretty big when we're actually seeing it on the HoloLens. And we can see that by just actually playing the project. And it'll kind of pop open into this HoloLens emulator. If I hold the space bar, I can see this uh, hand with all 25 joints and then if I back up you can see in perspective to the hand this sphere is going to be way too big for the size we want which would be closer to that little teal dot at the, at the tip of the index finger on this fake hand so we're gonna to have to scale this way down so I'm going to stop that and then come over to scale and I'll probably start it at 0 0.05 on each axis Then I'll run it again. All right, that seems a little bit closer to what we want. I might go down to 0 0.3. I'm sorry, 0 0.03 for each one. 0 0.03, okay. I'm also gonna change the mesh on this sphere to something different than the default material right here. So if we go to the mesh renderer, in the inspector, right here where it says element zero, I'm gonna click this circle, and I'm gonna select the ones, one of them that comes in MRTK, which is this blue wireframe right here. 
And if we zoom in on that, I can't see it very well. I'll just play it. And you can see it's this crisscross wireframe pattern. And I think that'll look pretty cool when we're actually attaching it to our hand on each finger. Okay, I think our sphere is good. Now I'm gonna turn it into a prefab. So I'm gonna go down here to the project viewer, click assets, and we're gonna create a prefabs folder. And then I'm gonna go into the prefabs folder and I'm just gonna drag the sphere into here. Once I do that, we can just delete the other one from our scene. And then we should be good to go. Okay, now we're ready to start writing some scripts. And before we do that, we're gonna add an empty object right here into the scene. And we're just gonna call this hand tracking controller, hand tracking controller, hit enter. And then on this object, we're gonna add a script. And that's just gonna be called hand tracking. And then we'll click create and add, and that's gonna add it to this object. Then I'm going to double click the script right here and it's going to open Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is now open and we're going to start writing our script. So uh, first thing I did was got rid of the default comments here. Next thing I'm going to do is import some packages. So I'm just going to paste them right here. This is going to be the Microsoft package, the Microsoft.MixedReality.Toolkit.Utilities and same thing, but input packages. And these just provide us with the utilities and code that we need to track the hand joints that we're gonna track. First thing I'm gonna do is add a variable for the sphere that we created earlier. So we're gonna be importing that into the script so we can use it multiple times for each finger joint we're gonna track. So to do that, I'm going to say public game object and we'll call it sphere marker. And then next, I'm going to create a game object that represents the position of each of the fingers. So I'm gonna create five of those, but for this, I'm just gonna start with one. So this will also be a game object and I'll start with a thumb first. So we'll just do, call it thumb object. When the script starts, we're gonna have each of the game objects for each finger instantiate a sphere marker. So to start, I'm going to say, Thumb object equals instantiate sphere marker. And then we're also going to put this.transform as the position for that. And this is, like I said, just going to instantiate another instance of this sphere marker game object and set it to thumb object. Next, I'm going to come down to the update function. And the first thing we're going to do is set the thumb object enabled to false. So we're gonna disable the thumb object to start at each pass through of the update function. And that's to make sure that if the HoloLens can't find the finger joint that we're looking for, that it won't try to set the game object position to a hand joint that doesn't exist. So for each pass through, we're gonna first set enabled to false. We're gonna disable it. Then we're gonna look for the hand joint, the specific one that we want. If we find it, then we'll re-enable the thumb object and then set the position based on the position that the HoloLens gives us for that hand joint. So to start, I'm gonna say thumb object dot get component renderer dot enabled equals false. Like I said, this is just going to disable that game object. Then we're gonna write an if statement to see if we can find the hand joint that we're looking for. So for this, it's gonna be if hand joint utils, which is an MRTK utility to get the hand joint. Hand joint utils dot try get joint pose. And then in this, we're going to pass in tracked hand joint dot thumb tip. And of course this specifies that we're looking specifically for the thumb tip. And I have a typo there, tracked hand joint dot thumb tip. We're also gonna specify which hand we're looking for. So we're gonna say 
handedness.write. And then if it finds that joint on the right hand, it's going to output a pose. And this is a mixed reality toolkit object, which we will have to create up here at the top. So we're gonna go back up to the top and create a mixed reality pose, pose variable. And that way we can just use this pose variable when we find the joint and set the position of the thumb object based on that pose position. To do that, the first thing we're actually gonna do is re-enable thumb object. So we're gonna say thumb object .git component render enabled equals true. So we're saying, okay, we found the joint that we're looking for. Now we're gonna re-enable thumb object. And then we're gonna set the position by saying thumb object dot transform dot position equals pose dot position. This looks good, so I'm gonna save this and then go back over to Unity. Okay, before we hit play, we have to make sure that we drag the sphere object prefab that we made earlier into the script right here where it says sphere marker. It's gonna be expecting this game object in the script, so we don't want it to crash. We better make sure we do that. So I'm gonna drag sphere into the slot right there. Now we should be good to go. So I'll come up and hit play. And the HoloLens emulator should pop up. And then when I hold spacebar, we can see that sphere we created earlier is following the thumb. Perfect. Jumping back to Visual Studio, we have this working for the thumb and now we just have to do it four more times for the index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. So there's gonna be a lot of copying and pasting here and I'm just gonna speed this part up so that you don't have to sit here and watch me type out every single variable name. Okay, the game objects are set. Now I'm also gonna copy paste this in the start function four more times for each finger. And then same thing down here in the update function, four more times. And that goes for the if statements as well. All right, after you copy and paste all these if statements, make sure that you change the name of the hand joint in the if statement as well. I tried to name the variables that we created to be the exact same as MRTK has them. So it'll be whatever the variable name is, tip. So for here be, you know, middle tip. The next one will be ring tip. I'm sorry, index. Index tip would be first, then middle tip. But yeah, make sure that you do those in the if statement as well. Now I am aware there's probably a more efficient way to do this, especially in terms of the variables that we're creating up here. You could probably create an array of game objects and keep track of each finger joint that way. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm making it obvious which finger joint that we're tracking. The name lines up with the actual name of the hand joint. So just for this, we're gonna use five different game object variables. This is all looking good. I think the script is complete. I just wanna mention, I'll also be putting this code on GitHub and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So you can check that out if needed. All right, we're gonna save this, hop back over to Unity and then run it on the HoloLens 2. Here it is running on the HoloLens and you can see the spheres are perfectly tracking on the fingertips, which is what our code is supposed to do. This is pretty powerful and we can really attach any game objects that we want to any joint on the hand. Pretty awesome. I also put a link down in the description to this page, which is the MRTK official documentation. It gives a little bit more information about hand tracking, also lists the name of each individual joint if you wanna refactor our code and you know, track some of the other different joints on the hand. Here's the names for each one. And it gives some more scripting examples as well. So we implemented it one way, but there's multiple different ways you can get the positions of the hand joints. Um, and they're all listed here. 
All right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. And just another reminder, I'm gonna link everything that I referenced in the video down in the description. So if you wanna go reference that, feel free. But also feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me on Twitter at RyanXR underscore. If you have any questions or run into any issues with this tutorial, I'll try to help you out. All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.